Jackie Estacado. Wake up! <laughs> Catch me if you can! <laughs> Welcome back to the darkness. It's Jackie's third chance of life. And I guess we gotta chase a ghost. You know what would be but he's too easily distracted by this conversation with a guy that I'm pretty sure we killed for his thoughts on moose fucking. Yeah, yeah, we definitely killed him. He's, uh, he's got a floating torso that is not attached to the rest of his body. could park in your garage. And when I was a kid, I was going to... Yeah, that's, that's pretty terrifying. So why didn't you? But the fuzz is here, and that conversation goes on for two full minutes. So if you want to see it, tune in to the next bonus video. So I'll toss it over there. We got too much on our plate already. When I was a kid, I used to think that the subway system was like one big plate of spaghetti and all the stations were meatballs. My Uncle Paulie smacked me upside the head whenever I talked about stuff like that. Man, fuck Paulie. The subway is definitely spaghetti and meatballs. Don't let that asshole tell you otherwise. The first living person to notice our resurrection is just up ahead. Good old Vinnie Mortarello. Jackie. Jackie Estacado. Is that you? Holy mother of pearl, Jack. Everyone thought you was dead. We heard you flamed out at the same time as that cocksucker Eddie Schroeder. That's one hell of a stunt you pulled. Where you been hiding? I spent a couple of weeks in a dark place. You wouldn't understand. Mystery man, huh? Well, you sure made some waves, son. The Chicago boys are considering pulling the plug on your dear old Uncle Paulie. He's on his knees, ready to suck whatever dick he can so that he won't freeze his assets. He's holed up. Not even Butcher knows where. Schroed's people mention Mother of God. Now, I think it had something to do with the administration in Chicago. You know anything about that? Uh, strange. He and Pauly got religious? Run the name with Butcher. <laughs> He's gonna shit in his britches. When you show up, you're supposed to be dead. So go see Butcher. He should be over Aunt Sarah's. He's, uh, helping around with some stuff or some shit. I, I don't know. Good an explanation as any, I guess. And Mortarello's not just here to give us a warm welcome back to life. We've spoken to him before. He also sent us to Aunt Sarah's last time, where we killed some douchebag in a tracksuit. So it's time to tell him the good news and start this chapter off right with something that every Mafia movie needs. A murder montage. Okay. Well, um, back to the West Coast business, I guess. So I heard that there's another one down Grinders Lane, you know? The Chicago family sent him to Pauly to look over things. Sledgehammers. Plus, he's a genuine prick. Take uh, special care of him.
That was nice work, Jack. You, you understand? There's another one of these pricks down in Chinatown. Sell shit to the kids around. Or get him plumb. guys left. You fix this little problem, Paulie's gonna go apeshit. And the last one is this dickhead Paulie's got stationed at Gun Hill. He's keeping an eye on Schrode for Paulie. There is not much left of Schrode to keep an eye on. Clearly we were supposed to do this set of side quests back when we first unlocked it in Chapter 3. But it's still available, and I thought Chapter 3 was bloated enough with side quests, so I moved it over here. Now, oh, I wanted to show off this last one, not as part of the montage, but in real time. Because of a few reasons, honestly. The first is coming up just ahead. We haven't been to Gun Hill in a long time, and Jackie's got some new thoughts about the place. They called this place Gun Hill, after 4,000 people died here during the Revolution. Even to this day, they say you can still hear the cries of the dead and the dying as you sleep. I hear them. An interesting history lesson. Of course, we know that Jackie hears screams all the time for very different reasons. But surely you remember Gun Hill. It's a ridiculously simple back alley. If you're gonna stick to the ground level, you're not gonna see very much at all. We got Schroet's apartment building. Ape Hunter still in there. For no reason. We were told the hit was across the street from the apartment building. Where there is exactly one open window in the entirety of Gun Hill. So we'll use our darkness powers to kill the lights, because we're gonna need all the energy we can get. We're sending the creeping dark in there. It's the other reason I wanted to separate this from the montage. This is not a typical kill you see in a Mafia movie. It's our target, undisturbed by the television. He was sleeping on the job, but we managed to get his attention very briefly. You can imagine that's probably why he didn't realize Schroet's been gone for what we are led to believe is weeks. We also get the very last Darkling outfit in the entire game there. So it's worth doing, even though it's a bit of a pain in the ass. As we make our exit, we can observe that Jackie has come down with a bit of a skin condition. When we were in the other world, we learned that the darkness is beginning to consume Jackie's soul. Now when it is manifested, his skin turns to what appears to be molten obsidian. It should be fine. As long as we don't kill anyone. Oh, um, whoops. Nothing interesting to add on this loading screen. Just casually whistling after a job well done. So I skipped it. All the loading screens are skippable. Having all the loading screens in the game be little video clips is honestly kind of a neat idea. But it does noticeably add several seconds to all loading times in the game. Which adds up. Also, when I want to show one off, I have to reset the game like a hundred times to get it on recording. But that is my personal nightmare. Atta boy, Jackie. 
I'm the older guys. We don't forget a thing like this. I'll vouch for you when the time comes. Yeah. Hey, you did a good thing, son. You got a lot of old timers won't forget what you did for us. Now that fat shit Paulie's gonna think twice before handing our jobs out to them California crackers again, huh? <laughs> well, our ultimate plans for Polly are much bigger than that. So that didn't really matter. But it did get us the most involved collectible in the game, so that's out of the way. Now to speak to a previously unresponsive NPC for an easier collectible. What's the matter, dear? Can I help you? Mrs. Hazelgrove? I'm not sure we've ever met ever, dear. Mind you, I am getting a little forgetful. <laughs> yes, I'm Rosie Hazelgrove. Mrs. Hazelgrove? I know this is gonna sound real strange, but there's something I need to tell you. What is it, dear? Spit it out. I have a message. It's from your husband. Charlie. He wanted me to tell you that he always thought of you. He still does. I mean, Mrs. Hazelgrove, he told me to tell you you always the light in the darkness. He wanted me to give you this. Where did you get this? Thank you, my dear. Thank you. You're an angel from heaven. Charlie. I always knew you were waiting for me. I can only hope for your sake that you don't end up meeting him where he's waiting for you. And Jackie did drop that cheesy light in the darkness line, but she fell for it. They were meant for each other. Now I'm gonna go bother this guy, because I have a feeling he's important. Jackie, don't you remember me? Little Petey. Hey, listen, you need to ask a favor. Can you deliver a message for me? Sure. What, you want me to whack someone? No, 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 no. This is strictly on the up and up. It's not a job. It's uh, just a message. Take this envelope and give it to Mickey Famion. Come into Canal Street on the A train. Jesus, Petey. Why not give me something a little bit challenging? How do I recognize this guy? Yeah, he's a cocky son of a bitch. Where's a hat? Red hat. Day and night. Well, you won't miss it. Oh, Christ. I know those chuds. You absolutely positive you don't want me to shoot him in the head? Because I'll do it. I'll throw that in for free. Ah, uh, if he's going to be in the subway system, we won't be able to pull our guns. So let's head over there, see if we can find a cocky son of a bitch in a red hat. There's something coming. Maybe it's that eclipse they were talking about on the news. Yeah, just feels weird. Whatever it is, it's big. I feel like a penguin trying to stop a runaway polar bear. Ah, that old saying. Not gonna worry too much about stopping polar bears right now. We gotta play the courier real quick. If there was some indication of which track had the A-Train, that would have been a clue, but there isn't. So what about this guy who does not match the description in any way? Yep, that's definitely him. Estacado, right? What do you want, son? I got a message from little Petey here in this envelope. Here you go. Ah, message from little Petey, huh? All right, kid, here's a little something for you. 
feeling like they got a bit lazy with the side quests in this chapter. Yeah, I heard about your broad sick stuff. Real fucked up, kid. Listen, I gotta go. Yeah, thanks. Needed that. See ya, Staccato. I got a buck. See you around, son. Well, he turned out to be about as unpleasant as I expected. We are haunted enough by Jenny without him bringing it up. See? Can't take two steps without running into her ghost. That's kind of an odd non sequitur, but we still got business down here in the subway system. Always plenty of business down here. Not up that way though. That is where Sarah is, but... More side quests. Lazy, lazy side quests. You may recall what we did last time we went up to Chinatown. But no good deed goes unpunished. So there's a new NPC over here. Hey, Jackie. How are ya? I got this chick, a tenant of mine, real pain in the ass. Three months late with a rent, she's only been in the apartment for half a year. Why don't you throw her the fuck out? She says she's a friend of yours. Now, you know, I've been tight with your family for years, kid, but I gotta pay the bills like everyone else. Oh, boy. I have never been more conflicted in this game. All right, don't sweat it. I'll have a talk with her. I appreciate you helping me out, Jackie. Surely you can guess who he was talking about. Yep, it's Dana Catrone, having just landed on her feet after we got the apartment back to her. Ah, oh, fuck! Oh, ha. oh, you scared me there, Jackie. Oh, Ooh. Oh, oh you're, you're here because you talked to Mr. Blackmore, right? Oh, okay, here's the deal, Jackie. I need this fucking place, but now an asshole fucking needle dick Blackmore raised around, right? Fucking fat ass! Trying to fucking sweat me out. Okay, Jackie, listen. Could you help me with one last thing? You know, just convince asshole Blackmore I, I could stay. Please, Jackie! Don't even have an option. No, I can't ask him. Now I need those keys back. Yeah, yeah, Jack, you okay? Yeah, I pack my stuff up right now. Take the key back to Mr. Blackmore and uh, I just, I'll be out in no time. I said I would fucking leave already! Promise. Oh man, she patched things up with Joey even. Things were going well, but we need that collectible, I guess. Let's wrap this sordid business up. Hey, you got my key. Oh, what about the chick? I asked her to move along, you know? I was real polite about it. Thanks, kid. She was a pain in the ass. I appreciate you helping me out, Jackie. Uh, they even made him look revolting. Good thing that darkness is there to remind us that this is far beneath us. Just act like it never happened. Hopefully next time they send us out, it's to do some horrible violence. So I'm much better suited to that. The person who just walked past us was a new named NPC. Only appears here in Chapter 5. But if you get anywhere near her, she talks your ear off in a Minnesotan accent. Then doesn't give you any sort of side quest. It's a trick, and you can see it in the bonus video. The mother of God thing was way too obvious. I figured it had to be something else. 
Now, I knew that Aunt Sarah and the Butcher were ready to see Schrott and Pauly's asses on a platter. I've already got an opening. Maybe they can help turn it into a gaping hole. Ugh. Wish he'd watched his wording there. I don't really want to turn their asses into a gaping hole. Oh, we gotta mail off our hell letters again. This time I'm gonna make sure they're gone. Yep, we're rid of them. All the phone number collectibles can actually be unlocked by dialing the phone. There's an individual number for every single one of them. But the 27 letters actually have to be physically collected in the other world to get 100%. Can't use cheats for those. Jackie! Oh, you're still alive! Oh, thank the Lord! <sighs> Holy catfish! Jackie? Jackie, is that you? This problem with your Uncle Paulie has gone on long enough, Jackie. It's time to take action. I think the decision has just about made itself anyway, what with the way he's been carrying on. Now, some old friends of the family want to know what they can do to help. Eddie Schroeder's guy said something about the Mother of God. It was supposed to be an inside joke, but it meant something. Now, I think there's some kind of connection to the Chicago family's something Paulie wants to keep to himself. Mother of God? Like the Virgin Mary? You don't suppose he's talking about the Santa Maria? Mm -hmm. That's a Chicago family boat. It's been running shipments of drugs into the harbor for years. Knowing Eddie, he wouldn't resist a chance to talk about it to a dying man. <laughs> he always did have diarrhea in the mouth. Especially if there's something big going on. Chicago family's gonna be real interested in what happens here, Jackie. This is gonna be your best chance to get Paulie out of the picture for good. You just say the word, and I'll help if I can. I want to know more about this Santa Maria, Butch. Anything there I can use against Paulie? Listen, Jackie. I would never normally say this. <clears throat> you know me. I never choose sides. But you already put a hole in Paulie's finances when you took out Dutch Oven Harry's operation. You put a few holes in that boat, Santa Maria. <laughs> the Chicago family's gonna pull a plug and Paulie will find himself swimming to the bottom of the river. I need to know how to mess up Paulie's deal. They got people inside the Coast Guard. They usually wait for the coast to clear, and they call the Santa Maria in from the harbor to make a shipment. <clears throat> There's a radio they use down at Grinders Lane, tuned to the correct frequency at all times. <clears throat> You get to that radio and call in, and they'll send the boat. <laughs> Go to Grinders Lane. There's an exit at Fulton Street Station. If you get to that radio and call in, they'll send the boat. Now you do what Butcher says. The boat's name is Santa Maria. You should go to Grinders Lane and find that radio. We've used that radio before. Several hours ago, or for Jackie several lifetimes ago. And you may have figured out, because it was called the Santa Maria, that it was the Mother of God. Saint Mary, Jesus' mother. Very clever. Hey, you know why the New York subway was invented? Alright, I'll tell you. There's a group of tunnels they use for smuggling Italian immigrants. Well, that's what Jimmy the Grape told me one time. And another history lesson from Jackie. He's full of fun facts. Now, this time I'm not bringing you to the subway station just to waste your time, like I usually do. I've got another survivor from a previous chapter to speak to. 
Yo, Jack A! I got something for you. You ever hear of a guy by the name of Frankie Thierry? He sets up most of the trade between Paulie and the Chicago families. They call him Noses. Yeah, yeah. I heard of him. He's a scumbag. Yeah, well, word on the street is he's about to run a couple of kilos of Paulie's junk through town to his drop point. What say we, uh, we help get it off the street, huh? Well, what's the plan, Stan? Noses comes through Fulton Station all the time. I'm gonna give you a briefcase, right? Noses carries one just like it. Find the right moment to pull a switch, then bring it back to me, I'll flush that shit down the drain. Go to Fulton and pull the switch with Thierry's suitcase. Then come back here. That I can definitely do, but not just yet. We gotta go to Grinders. During the war, they used to have this saying, loose lips sink ships. Now I know what they mean. And soon the Chicago families will know too. All I need is that radio to call in their boat. We sure got a weird relationship with those Chicago families. Half the time we are manipulating them and fucking them over, the other half we are relying on them to defeat Polly. They've got a guard set up near the gates. Better prepare, because they can be pretty tough at this point of the game. They just run right out in front of us. Not a care in the world. He's pretty sure he's tough. I'm not so convinced, so I summoned a Darkling to take care of him. Finally got a good look at the potato sack kill. It's the first outfit we ever collected, and it is disappointing that it's taken this long to see the damn thing. They are bad at allowing a uh, variety in the Darkling summons. And the old fuse box doesn't work. No way through the gate. So we gotta fight these guys. Easy enough. This is the right way. Kill more. Oh yeah, I forgot that killing was suddenly bad. Well, we can do considerably less killing if we had a way over that gate. And we do. Crushing that corpse is incidental. If we get up on this car, we can use our demon arm to surf it. If we have enough energy. Get a recharge going. See if we can't try that again. Gotta get a good grip on it with the demon arm. Didn't quite catch it there, so I accomplished nothing. Doesn't want to lock on right now. There we go. We can slide it forward, and if we move forward at the same time, we can carry ourselves. But. It's, it's not nearly as useful as I said it was there. Turning the car up on its side though, that is useful. So we can use the dumpster to climb on it again. And from here, we can easily jump over the gate. Which would get us to our goal immediately. But no, I'm gonna play fair. Pretend I didn't do a physics exploit. And give the people what they want. By the people, I mean the darkness. It's a light switch over here on the wall. There's like 10 light switches in the entire game. But if you can find them, they're pretty useful. Not especially useful are the darkness guns. The Vortex Gun gets the job done at the cost of about half your darkness energy. The Lightning Gun does nothing. We're gonna play with it, but for the most part it just makes people dance around. Because it does terrible damage and has the most ridiculous spread of any gun in the game. Almost positive that it is worse than the SMGs. Just knock that guy down to get back up. 
absolutely no use on the guys across the room. It could have been implemented better. Seems kind of perfunctory as an addition to the game. But they're cool anyway. They look neat, if nothing else. Tried once again to show off any of our new Darkling outfits. But I got the potato sack again because every portal is tied to a specific outfit. So if you collect that outfit, the same Darkling will come out of that portal every single time. It's a waste, especially if you unlock the special pre-order costumes. Those things never show up. But here's our radio. This is Captain Andrei Kuchum of the Santa Maria. What's the story? Over. You can bring in the boat. Everything's clear. Over. Affirmative. We are coming in. There we go. Brought the ship in. And it is now at the very opposite corner of the entire game. Couldn't be further away. Bunch of mobsters show up just too late to stop us. Broke through our barricaded gate somehow. Drove right through the car on the way. Knocked the dumpster out of there. And we can just run away from them. Or we can not run away from them. That guy is T-posing at us. Most threateningly. Such an insult will not stand. And we finished off everybody. Because that's just the kind of guy Jackie is. Even when killing has a horrific punishment tied to it, he's gonna do it. Got another tip from Butcher. Probably won't have anything to do with our transformation into a demon. But we'll find out next time.